Big news! I've launched the Patients Getting Paid Facebook group. Be sure to like the page to be notified when I post there. Want to have a say in what topics are covered in the Patients Getting Paid training? Post it on that page. Want to meet other people with chronic illness looking to find work to better accommodate their health? That's the place to meet them. Want to be notified as soon as I launch this program that will teach you how to find work to accommodate your health through patient advocacy, online business, and legit flexible work recruiters? Sign up at FUMSnow.com forward slash Patients Getting Paid. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the Patients Getting Paid Facebook group. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me here again on the FUMS Podcast Show. A couple of housekeeping notes. I sent out a newsletter every Friday night with links to the top six topics in MS that have happened that week, along with my typical smart-ass commentary. <laughs> if you're interested, you can sign up at FUMSnow.com forward slash get the scoop. Also, I post show notes for each episode of the podcast. You don't have to rush to write down a URL or a book title or whatever we're talking about. It'll be there for you in the show notes. And it's a great place to talk directly to me and my guest and chat with other listeners about each episode. Just go to FUMSnow.com forward slash podcast for all of the episodes. Welcome to the FUMS Now podcast show, where you'll gain information, inspiration, and motivation for living your best life with multiple sclerosis. Find us online at FUMSnow.com. I'm your host, Kathy Reagan Young. My guest today is Hannah Olson. In 2015, Hannah was diagnosed with Lyme disease and had to wear a pick line. Simple everyday tasks became feats for her as her chronic illness threatened to derail her early career. Sensing that there were others out there facing the same challenges, she founded Chronically Capable to match the chronically ill to flexible remote work opportunities. As CEO, Hannah draws on her experience as a performer, athlete, and digital marketing specialist using her intimate knowledge of working as someone with a chronic illness. Outside of Chronically Capable, she works as a national Lyme ambassador and a workplace inclusion speaker advocating for the chronically ill community. That's us. And she's really cool. I like her a lot. I think you will too. Let's go meet Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Thanks so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's get into it. Um, would you please share your story of your Lyme diagnosis and what that meant to you in regards to your career? Because I think you were sort of just starting your career when you got the diagnosis, right? Yes. Yeah, so I was diagnosed with Lyme in college. Um, I attended Boston University. Um, and when I landed my dream job after graduation, it was here in Washington, D.C. Um, at a design agency. But I had this added difficulty of being on an IV for six hours a day and having to take 28 pills a day on top of that. Um, wow. So that's, yeah. So I had a pretty crazy experience with Lyme. And um, this obviously wasn't compatible, you know, with having to go in and out of meetings and meeting yeah. clients, um, et cetera. So that yeah. tragically, I had to quit this job. Um, oh, I bet that broke your heart. Yeah, this was a really hard time for me because I struggled with, you know, is there a place for people like me? Is there a place for people with disability or with chronic illness in our workforce? Um, and for a while, um, I, I really thought that there wasn't. Um, I just kept hearing other people and, and support groups and on different Facebook pages saying this same common sentiment that, mm -hmm. you know, is there a place for people like us? Right. Um, so I became determined to change that because, you know, just because physically I had limitations, it doesn't mean that mentally my ambitions, they weren't intact. Mm -hmm. um, Right. So I ended up meeting this. Yeah, exactly. So I ended up meeting this team in DC and they were building a recruiting tool for companies. Um, and so after a little bit of brainstorming, we said, well, what if we could leverage the tech of this product and use it to connect the chronically ill to remote work? Um, so that's how this all came about, but it, it was stemmed from my diagnosis. with Yeah. Lyme. Um, okay. So Let's let's back up just a minute. Let's um. Why don't you share with everybody what chronically capable is, and and then we can catch back up to where you just brought us. Yeah. So chronically capable is a website application that users can log on, create an account, and set their job preferences, and we'll send them personalized job recommendations based on that criteria. That's so cool. So it's like the Match.com for chronically ill and disabled and flex remote work opportunities. 
Exactly. It's, it's kind of like the Uber for work, yeah. um, but for the chronically ill. Nice. Very good. That's very cool. And so you first met with this group. Um, I assume that you didn't necessarily have the idea for the chronic, uh, um, for the chronically capable, but you were talking to this group about um, how it could be technologically done. Yeah, so I joined forces with them um, after leaving my first job. Like I said, I was really defeated at this time, um, and so I was very hesitant to to even go back into the workforce. Um, I, I didn't know what type of job that I could do. So I met this team, and they were building a tool, and they they wanted to hire me to help um, with marketing, and when I met them, we started talking a lot about just my own struggle with Lyme um, yeah. and how that affected my work. So it didn't come about right away. It came up about a, th- a few months into our relationship um, working together. But, you know, I just kept seeing this problem yeah. across everywhere. It's just, you know, it's really hard to work when you're sick. Yeah, that's a fact. And it's uh, not like it's it just affects a few people. I mean, I was stunned to learn that approximately 133 million or 40% of all Americans have a chronic disease. I mean, that's so much more far reaching than I think most people realize because when they think of chronic conditions, they think more of people that are bed bound for whatever reason. But this is really across, well, 40%. (laughs) That's a huge number. I mean, that's been really driving the initiative is that number alone. And also the fact that by 2020, there, it's said that half of our population is going to live with at least one chronic illness and 2020 is next year. So oh, crazy. Um, it, it really does affect it. And like you said, people have this opinion that it means it's this blanket term that means you're sick in a hospital bed right. and they don't understand that oftentimes chronic illness is invisible. Yeah. You know, if people saw me today, they would never know. Um, that I'm chronically ill because I, I, I don't appear that way. Right. Um, yeah. And some things are considered chronic illnesses that some people might not consider. Like obviously MS is, but, but perhaps folks in the MS community wouldn't consider anxiety as, um, you know, a chronic illness, but it absolutely is. I mean, and that's obviously everything's on a spectrum. <laughs> so right. it can be a little, it can be a lot. And on every day it's different. This is something that the MS community really understands, but But it's just so much more far-reaching than I even had any uh, cognition of until I started delving in for this interview, and it's just pervasive. So I knew that, you know, something like uh, chronically capable was needed, but I had no idea how much it was needed. Right. (laughs) So that's fantastic. So, um, So how long ago did this launch? So we, um, the, the idea came about last September. Um, and the product, the first website was launched on October 1st of last year, um, 2018. And it, it was launched on October 1st because October is National Disability Awareness Month. So the timing just seemed perfect to, you know, let's yeah. launch this right away before we had even thought about it. Right. Um, and we, we set it up first as just a one page website. Mm-hmm. Um, and the website said something like, sign up to learn more. Um, and it said it had my photo, and it said Hannah, twenty-two, chronically capable of kicking Lyme disease's ass. Um, and it was just this basic photo that was very eye-capturing, and it said sign up to learn more. Um, and and we put that website up to really just gauge interest, and had no idea, you know, where that would lead. And our goal was let's try and get a hundred people to sign up in the first week. Um, and and you know, I think in the first few days we hit a thousand. Holy cow! And so we were just blown away with yeah. with the response that we were receiving um we realized you know this is something we do need to to yeah. work on yeah um, on it. and so it started just as that website back in october um but then after that we decided you know let's not build something until we know exactly what needs to be built and exactly what the problem is here because if you talk to anyone everyone has a different perspective of of what the issue is mm-hmm. um so we took a, a big step back and um, I spoke with hundreds of chronically ill individuals, with medical professionals, with employers, and really tried to get an idea of what is the problem that we're trying to solve. Mm-hmm. Um, and once we figured that out, we figured that a tech solution was the way to solve this. Um, so our first working MVP actually didn't launch until April um, of this year. So it's only been gotcha. about three, three or four months since this new working yeah. model has actually been live. So we're getting in on the ground floor with you. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's for the early stages. Excellent. Um, I imagine you got a big boost from the Fast Company magazine article about you and Chronically Capable, right? We did. Um, So luckily that article came out um, in June as well as um, an article through Medium, which um, Mm -hmm. we thought at first was just a blog post, but um, it was actually done through Medium, the company. So that was a great article as well to, to help push people to our site. Yeah, I I will uh, link to those articles in the show notes, which by the way, everybody, you know, you don't ever have to take notes here. I take the notes for you, put them in the the show notes. And for this episode in particular, it will be fumsnow.com forward slash episode 43. And please feel free to leave any comments, um, any that are directed to Hannah, I'll make sure that she gets as well. So um, how did those articles come about? Did they come to you? Did you go to them? Yeah, so actually all of our um, press so far has been completely organic. Fantastic. Um, We've had zero marketing spend so far on everything and chronically capable. Um, The Fast Company article came out through a freelance writer who heard about chronically capable through a friend and just came to our website and was interested um, in what we were doing. And he happened to write for, you know, New York Times and uh, Fast Company and a few different websites and I told him on one of our first calls that Fast Company had been a dream of mine since high school. I'd been reading it forever. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was- And now you're in there. A shock, yeah. Um, (laughs) That's great. Well, congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) So um, the service is free for the job seekers, right? The chronically capable. Um, It is. So what is the business model? I mean, how, I know that you're just sort of in the- seed stages, but how, how will the business make money? What's the, the model? Um, so, you know, I, I think it's important to first look at, at what we're doing. Um, so obviously this is the remote workspace. Um, we found that this market it's, it's grown 115% faster than the rest of the workforce. Mm. Um, but the current market leaders in this remote workspace, they're oversaturated. So a common one you think of is Upwork. Um, and that's how you can usually find, you know, remote work from home opportunities. But in 2017, so just two years ago, only 3% of their actual registered users completed a job on the site. So oh what happens is these websites, they're highly competitive and they're oversatur- oversaturated and they're leaving few opportunities for actual work. Yes. Um, I'm one of the 97% exactly. that didn't. I've complete. never gotten a job on there either. <laughs> and I, you know, I've applied to so many things and I'm yeah. like, what the heck? I I'm know. capable. <laughs> I, I have know. a good resume. Like, what? Well, I don't get it. That just made me feel a lot better because yeah. I was like, what kind of loser am I? I get nothing out of this. Nobody's contacting me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, our main objective here is to get every user who applies for a job on the site hired um, because, you know, that's just unacceptable, that. unacceptable to me that 97% of the users aren't actually getting jobs. Right. Um, but so we are taking a typical recruiter model approach ap- approach, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's different tiers based on um, part-time work, full-time, and short-term work. Okay. Okay. Um, But typical to uh, a recruitment model of a a recruiter. Exactly. So it'll be the employers who are paying, not the potential employees. Yes. Um, So something that I feel very strong about and my team as well is the fact that if you're chronically ill, you're sick, and you're already having crazy bills and things to pay for. And one of the reasons that we need to work is because we need money to, you know, put food on the table and to pay for these different pills. So I find it for me, it's, it's, it's crucial that it always stays free for the chronically ill. Um, so yeah, it would, it would go on the employer and, um, there would be different models rolled out through, um, throughout the years of just, or, or throughout the year, who knows on the time frame, but, right. um, with different options, you know, for, for employers to, yeah. to pay for. Excellent. So do you actually have any gigs on there now, or are you just at the stage where you are sort of, um, gathering, you know, chronically capable emails and working with employers, uh, with the plan to sort of open the doors later? Well, so as it's currently set up, um, like I said, in the beta version, um, users can go on and upload their resume and we will be sending job um, matches to these users. Um, Right now, there's not a feature where you can add a profile. That's something that will be rolled out um, 
again, this comes down to issues of funding um, and just really getting money behind this idea to build out the tech. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now you do have the opportunity to upload your resume on the website and we do send matches. Very Um, cool. Yes. And then we're working to try and, um, talk with these employers and really explain, you know, this is the problem here, um, and get employers to partner with us and, and give us jobs that come directly from them. Yeah. Awesome. So would you mind giving us some examples of the types of gigs that are available through chronically capable and, like, are they all one-off gigs or are there more long-term or permanent positions available? So like I said, there's, there's really three different types here. There's the short-term, part-time, and full-time work. So a short-term um, job would be, like you said, a one-off gig. Mm-hmm. Uh, part-time would be, you know, maybe two days a week, three days a week, but it would be for an extended period of time, whereas full-time would be your typical 40 hours a week. Mm-hmm. So there are all three types of jobs Um, And the the recruitment model changes based on the job type. Um, But yep, there are all three types because this is something that we keep seeing is that when we ask on our website, are you looking for full-time work or part-time work? Someone, every time that somebody submits an answer, it's different. Mm -hmm. Um, So we didn't find that everyone was looking for short-term or everyone was looking for full-time. We've, this changed based on every single user. Um, So which really showed us that chronic illness affects each person differently and at different points in your life or even just, you know, throughout the sure. day it can change. So no I think question. That having all three models are very important here. Yeah. And, you know, something else that I really like about that this is, I'm going to say this wrong, but this is labeled. That's kind of a funky way of saying it. But my point is that the employers know that you know, you may need, I don't know, a nap or whatever. And so it's just not going to be, to me, it doesn't feel like the high pressure that you may find in other positions where you actually have to keep it quiet that you, (laughs) that you have a chronic illness for fear of, you know, not getting the job or potentially getting fired because of it. I think this is fantastic. I think disclosure is a huge piece here. And this is a, a comment we receive all the time is, you know, how do I disclose my illness Mm -hmm. Um, and what are the right things to say? Um, And so we're hoping to definitely roll out some resources as well for people to understand that conversation. But um, I think that upfront piece of being able to, you know, it's already known in your relationship with your employer that they they understand that they recognize it. Um, That's really important here because it shouldn't be something you have to hide just because, like I said, just because you might need physical accommodations, it does not mean your mental ambitions aren't intact and that you can't be an an instrumental part of our workforce. So Um, so just that piece of, of being upfront from the beginning, I think is very important. Yeah. And you know, that is something I honestly hadn't really considered this until this conversation with you, but that's a whole different level of stress that I think we don't even necessarily recognize. So, you know, just having to kind of keep it quiet and not disclose or think about when to disclose, when's the best time and who should I disclose? All of that is just sort of this extra layer of stress that, you know, as we all know, stress is about the worst thing for chronic illness. So, um, so I think this could just help people in so many ways. Brilliant. Yeah. I hope so too. Yeah. Um, So uh, do any of these things come with benefits, by the way? Yeah. So again, it varies on gig to gig. Some of the short-term work obviously would not, um, but the full-time jobs oftentimes do include benefits. Something that we've seen is that people who are on disability, sometimes um, they just, disability doesn't pay for enough. They don't receive enough money to, in order to pay for, you know, food and things that you need. Um, so some people are looking for those short-term gigs just to, to um, be able to afford life. Right. Um, but some people are looking for benefits. Like I myself know that I need a company that has health insurance because right. there are doctor's appointments and um, prescription mm-hmm. pills and such. Yeah. So it, it really depends. But yes, we'd like for all of the full-time opportunities to have benefits. That's yeah. something that... Ultimately. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um. So this dovetails beautifully with my upcoming course and membership community called Patients Getting Paid, because I'll be offering training on things like, you know, finding patient advocacy gigs and how to start an online business. And 
one of the training modules is all about legit online remote and flexible recruiters. Um, and I, I emphasize legit because I have certainly <laughs> run across a lot that are not legit. Um, so I'd love to include chronically capable as a resource in, in that course. Well, thank you. Um, we'd love that. Perfect match. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for doing this, Hannah. This is so interesting. Um, I know that people are going to find this exciting and want to head over and sign up and upload their resume. So if people have more questions about Chronically Capable or they want to get signed up and get to work, where do they go? So you can head to the website. It's www.wearecapable.org. Um, on the website, there is a form there that you can submit and ask questions. There's also a chat on the website. I see those messages. I try to respond to every single message myself. So um, feel free to reach out there. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure you can also include um, on the end of this podcast, different ways, um, different social channels and such. And you're more than willing to include mine as well. Um, I'm, we're, we're at a stage where I still really, really want to be involved in this entire process. Um, I think it's really important. Everyone sharing their story um, makes this more and more worth it um, and makes me want to keep pushing to make this happen. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, I want to hear your stories and, and help you in any way that I can. So um, I'm not sure if you can add our social channels or my email to the bottom of this, but everything feel will be free on, to do so. Everything will be on the show notes for sure. So you can find Hannah and you can speak with her uh, yourself and you can also upload your resume and, and um, become chronically capable. <laughs> yeah. And one other thing, if yeah. you have any suggestions, um, anybody listening um, to things, features that you'd like to see, we're still in the stage that the product is being built. So we we're really welcoming any feedback of, you know, um, tools or accessibility tools that you might want to see on the website. Um, please send those oh, I love questions that. our way. Um, it's so in helpful. The future, yeah. Our goal is to be able to, you know, include a number of accessibility tools um, so people with visual or mobile impairments can still find value in the site. Great idea. Um, and we'd really like to incorporate different um, features such as a rating system um, so that both the workers and employers are performing and that this becomes a community of strength and credibility. So please um, send any features or suggestions your way, things you'd like to see. As this is still being built out, it's really important that we, we're building a product for the chronically ill. So oh, I um, love that. Welcome any feedback. That's fantastic. One thing I did think of as you were talking is, and I'm including this in the patients getting paid as well. So you might consider doing something um, even, I don't even know, maybe just a uh, content section about the Ticket to Work program with disability, because I mm -hmm. have run into a lot of people who could really use um, even a part-time gig, but they're afraid that they're going to lose disability if they make any money. And I right. know that that's not necessarily true, but there are some, you know, criteria to be considered. So that would be my two cents worth. Include that so people know. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's sure. definitely something that it would be a helpful resource for people. Yeah. So stuff like that, definitely any suggestions, send them our way. Um, this, this product is for, for you. So. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. I appreciate you spending this time with me today and sharing this wonderful resource with us. Best of luck to you with this. And I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about you and chronically capable. Thank you so much for your time as well. Thanks everybody. I really appreciate you listening to the FUMS podcast show. Be sure to subscribe to it so you won't miss an episode. You can do that right on the website at FUMSnow.com. While you're there, sign up for the free email list so you'll be among the first to know of any new findings in MS research, new therapies and products, as well as any blog posts and podcast episodes I release. Want to chat with others in the FUMS community? Join us on Facebook at FUMS Now. Thanks again, and don't forget to talk to the stupid disease as it deserves. Tell it FUMS every day.